Hey everyone, this is Paul Gale from paulgalenetwork.com and thank you for joining me today for Video Game Sales. It is February 15th, 2022 and in today's video we are going to check out the US NPD results for the month of January 2022. This is courtesy of Matt Piscatella from the NPD Group. He puts this chart together on Twitter once a month and it gives us a good breakdown of US hardware spending, software, accessories, etc. for the month prior. Here we're going to check out January look over this thread and yeah, have a good time. All right, in January, consumer spending across video game hardware content and accessories declined 2% when compared to a year ago to $4.7 billion. A double digit percentage gain in hardware spending could not offset declines in content and accessory spending. So that's pretty interesting. Right off the bat, we got more people spending more money on hardware across PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, Nintendo Switch, etc. But that could not be offset by declines in accessories. Not as many people buying controllers or uh, game software. Despite a big game coming out for the month, which you could probably already imagine, Pokemon Legends Arceus is that big game. But overall, a healthy month of $4.7 billion. Here we see a chart. And on some of these, as I usually do, I will skim over slightly, and I recommend you follow Matt Piscatella on Twitter. He's a cool person. We actually follow each other nowadays, and we have good conversations back and forth, so I appreciate his knowledge and insight, his friendship, who he is in the video game industry, because, you know, growing up, I loved numbers, and I was kind of in a minority of people who uh, really valued video game sales data, and now... I'm seeing a lot of people interested in it. Now, they might have always been into it, too. It's just we didn't have a way to connect with each other so easily. But nowadays, you see a lot of people into it, a lot of people following it, a lot of people passionate about it. And, yeah, getting this direct connection with Matt is really cool. So I appreciate it and recommend you follow him. But on some of these forum or thread topics, rather, I will break them down a little more thoroughly. Video game hardware dollars increased 22 percent that's that double digit that we were talking about just a moment ago this is over january 2021's to 390 million dollars this is the highest total for a january month since the 447 million dollar total reached in january 2009 so that's quite an achievement right there that's a 13 year achievement in fact you can see though that 390 million is still a good amount of ways from 447. So January 09, you're talking peak January sales probably for Wii at the time, DS, PSP, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360. Five consoles all doing some numbers in that January 2009 timeframe. So uh, that's why it was so hard to beat and has still not been beat, but is the second highest in 13 years. So pretty cool there. Any guesses? You could probably already see here as I'm scrolling down. But any guesses what the best-selling console of the month was? It was PlayStation 5. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so I said this was going to be interesting because after Nintendo Switch dominated for all of its months and finally got dethroned, in September of 2021 by PlayStation 5, it bounced back up again in October, November, December, Nintendo Switch number one. January, here we have PlayStation 5 as number one. And I said, once this happens once, Nintendo will reclaim it for a little bit, but only for a little bit, and then we'll probably see this back and forth between PS5 and Nintendo Switch, Xbox Series X and PS5, Xbox Series XS, that combined ecosystem, and Nintendo Switch, etc. throughout 2022. If I had to place a safe bet now in terms of, you know, what do I think is going to be the number one best-selling piece of hardware for the year in the United States, I would say Nintendo Switch, most likely. Worldwide, I'm also going to say Nintendo Switch, but that doesn't mean every month necessarily worldwide or more specifically every month necessarily in the United States. So PlayStation 5 was the number one best-selling hardware platform for January in terms of units and dollars. Xbox Series ranked second in units and dollars. You know, Nintendo Switch 
It's not that it didn't do well, but it definitely had a giant December in terms of amount of hardware that Nintendo pumped out. So uh, that January leftover probably a little down, but enough that still made an impact because a lot of people bought Arceus and probably a lot of new people wanted to buy a system for Arceus. So yeah, February, March, April, these months going on, it will be really interesting to see what this back and forth is uh, made up of. In terms of uh, games, Pokemon Legends Arceus was January's best-selling game. It joined Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which was 11th, on best-selling titles chart for the month. Monster Hunter Rise, number three in January. That was up from 94th position in December, because we also have Monster Hunter Rise on PC now. God of War, 5th in January, up from 146th place a month ago. Once again, God of War also on PC, not just Play PlayStation 4 or PS5 now. Both featured Steam launches during January 2022, which drove their respective gains. Exactly what I said. Uh, so that's cool. Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales ranked as the sixth best-selling game of January. Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales now trails only Marvel's Spider-Man and God of War from 2018 in terms of lifetime dollar sales for Sony published titles since 1995. Isn't that an achievement? That is awesome. I am a huge fan of actually all three of these games. The folks at Insomniac did a terrific job with Spider-Man and with Miles Morales. So Miles getting so high, I'm really excited and looking forward to seeing just how much further it could go up. God of War, obviously with its PC launch, uh, that's just going to continue to rise too. It's also going to be interesting to see when Spider-Man 2 comes out where it will place because unless if Sony pulls something last minute, it's not coming to PS4. It's only going to be on a on PlayStation 5. So Sony really has to launch it when there are enough PS5s out there to get to a lot of people. So if a small or decent percentage of PS5 owners buy Spider-Man 2, that still equals a lot of Spider-Man 2s sold. Then again, positive word of mouth because I expect it to be a quality game. We'll probably give it a long tail that as new people buy PS5s because they can, because Sony does make them. It's going to be a longer generation too. Uh, God of War, or sorry, Spider-Man 2 will probably continuously sell. So uh, maybe Spider-Man 2 will be up there in that top four, right? On the mobile side, spending was down 6.8% year over year last month. This signaled a return to pre-pandemic revenue trends after the market witnessed an unpre unprecedented year over year and month over month growth throughout most of 2020 and 2021. So basically what this is saying is that, you know, we got a 6.8% downtrend and it's kind of more in tune with what mobile spending was pre-pandemic. More people are starting to get out there. So with that happening more and more people in the real world out there, you know, less and less of them are on their phones, buying all of these microtransactions, spending money on games, so uh, I guess that's to be expected, but hey, to a healthier world and still a successful video game industry, even from the mobile gaming standpoint, uh, I guess you can't have it all, but I think most people would agree, let's have a healthier world and still have successful, profitable ventures, maybe just not as much, but the trade-off being, hey, uh, a healthier world, that, that's good news, right? Prior to spring, 2020, January usually saw negative month-over-month -month growth, as was the case last month. In fact, January revenue generation saw a decline when compared to December for six consecutive years leading up to 2020. So that's an interesting stat breakdown. You know, coming off of December, usually you could expect less money spending in the first place, so that remained true for six years in a row now. Uh, this is all to say that the year-year, month-month cooldown in spending experience in January shouldn't be taken as a sign of an overall downtrend, rather return of typical seasonality to the market. I agree. Top U.S. 
mobile games by revenue in 2021 included Candy Crush Saga, Roblox, Coin Master, Genshin Impact, Garena, Free Fire, Ebony, The King's Return, Clash of Clans, Pokemon Go, Homescapes, and Royal Match. The top 20 best-selling games of the month are as follows. Pokemon Legends Arceus at number 1, Call of Duty Vanguard at 2, Monster Hunter Rise at 3, Madden NFL 22 at 4, God of War at 5, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales at 6, FIFA 22 at 7, Mario Kart 8 at 8, Rainbow Six at 9, Battlefield 2042 at 10, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl at 11, Far Cry 6 at 12, Minecraft at 13, NBA 2K22 at 14, Mario Party Superstars at 15, Animal Crossing New Horizons at 16, Forza Horizon 5 at 17, Halo Infinite at 18, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at 19, and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War at 20. We got a couple of new titles in there. Rainbow Six Extraction from Tom Clancy. That was ninth, and Pokemon Legends Arceus at 1. Um, on the Nintendo side of things, it looks like they occupy a quarter of the charts with 5 out of 20. Keeping in mind also that the Nintendo games, they have an asterisk next to them because those are not including eShop sales. Some titles also, like NBA 2K22 for instance, don't necessarily reflect all sales as some are digital and are not present here. But overall a pretty good list. It's great to see some evergreens. It's awesome to see some titles have this giant spike like God of War and Monster Hunter Rise. I think that the positive mouth of Pokemon Legends Arceus bodes really well for its long-term sales. You know, a lot of people buy Pokemon games regardless because every generation there is that core franchise audience that likes the games, likes the formula, likes the trades, the battles, etc. with friends. Arceus is very different. I would argue it's better. I think I'm having the most amount of fun I've had in a Pokemon game in a long time. But it is missing that multiplayer component in terms of battling. Just the trading side is there. Could they add battling in a future DLC update? Maybe. Wouldn't that be huge? But for now, we can't count on that. So for now, you got to look at Pokemon Legends Arceus as basically, uh, well, how well did The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sell? A game with a single player component, with a grand story, a lot to do, a great physics engine, etc. Word of mouth spread it, and it became the best selling Zelda game of all time. Is Pokemon Legends Arceus necessarily as quality of a title as Breath of the Wild? No. But is it a lot of fun? Yes. Does it have a little multiplayer in it? Yes. But more importantly, is it good? Absolutely. So I think somewhere between Breath of the Wild and, you know, another type of successful Pokemon title such as, you know, um, an XY, a Sun Moon, a Sword Shield is kind of where we could expect Pokemon Legends Arceus. I originally thought 16 to 21 million seems like a very safe range, but now I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a, a 19 to 22 million title. I'm both upping my lowest from like 16 to 19 potentially and narrowing my field from instead of five, like 16 to 21, to maybe three or four, 19 to 22, 19 to 23. Uh, we'll see, but it's a really good game. It's really fun. It, it is launching outside of a holiday season. So when this upcoming holiday comes around, depending on how many people did not buy it, that now want to buy it because it is their holiday shopping game that they want, it's going to get that extra boost regardless. Every quarter, I'm expecting some big numbers from Arceus, so really exciting. And yeah, the rest of the chart, like I said, filled up with a pretty good variety. Forza Horizon 5, you got to give props to it and Halo Infinite because they still managed to be the 17th and 18th best-selling game of the month despite also being available on Game Pass. So good for Xbox. You have PlayStation representation here and PC. So overall a pretty healthy chart. That's good. If you look at the top 10 on January for Nintendo, you see that um, we actually had 
Pokemon, Mario Kart, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Mario Party Superstars, Animal Crossing, Smash Brothers. So actually six games on the Nintendo side of things uh, that ended up being in the top 20. So Nintendo made up a little bit over a quarter in the overall charts because after number six, which was Smash Brothers, that was in the top 20, there we have Just Dance 2022, Breath of the Wild, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, and uh, New Super Mario Brothers. And if you look on the PlayStation side of things, uh, after Rainbow Six, which was fifth, then you have Ghost of Tsushima, Marvel Spider-Man, Battlefield 2042, NBA 2K22, Far Cry 6. Some of these titles are ones that, okay, they're on PlayStation and on PC. So like in terms of Spider-Man, uh, that's a little bit of a representation of, well, just how much did it sell per platform? Obviously, you know, thanks to a game being on PC, it makes the overall game sell better, but it's not necessarily just the PlayStation version. Like you don't see God of War, for instance, on this top 10 PlayStation chart, despite God of War charting on the top 20 overall chart because the PC build made up the vast majority of the sales. Marvel Spider-Man, however, it was the seventh best PlayStation game of the month sales-wise, but it also managed to be on top of the top 20 charts, correct? Let's see, where did Spider-Man land here? Well, we had Miles Morales there, but the regular Spider-Man, maybe I am corrected and the regular Spider-Man did not chart. And if that's the case, then yeah, there you have it. Uh, I was right in my original way of how I was reading the PlayStation charts. Uh, Spider-Man wasn't in the top, but it was a top seller for PlayStation because that game actually does not have a PC version. Uh, it's God of War that does. And, you know, when you get something like Rainbow Six or NBA 2K22, games that are on multiple platforms, including PC, then it's just that game sold the best. We don't know necessarily the breakdown. But when you do see a game on a console chart specifically as well, then you can say, okay, it's doing well on that platform too, you know. Xbox side of things, we've got Call of Duty, Vanguard, and Madden, Far Cry, Battlefield, Halo Infinite, Forza. Those games all finished up there. But once again, you see Rainbow Six and NBA 2K22, FIFA, Call of Duty, Black Ops. So, like Halo Infinite and Forza being here, you know, you do have Game Pass taking away some of the sales, but not enough that the games didn't sell well. And I said that kind of odd, but basically going back to what I stated earlier, that's impressive to see uh, those games sell well. So Microsoft's strategy is definitely uh, continuing to work pretty well. In January 2022, spending on video game accessories declined 15% compared to a year ago to $185 million. The Xbox Elite Series 2 wireless controller was the best-selling accessory for January. And uh, there you have it. So we actually went over everything to get more of an in-depth look and to expand the charts yourself and to talk back and forth to Matt. Like I said, follow him on Twitter. He is approachable and cool. So yeah, that's going to do it today for Video Game Sales with Paul Gale Network. Thank you for watching. I hope you had a good time. Let's see how February treats us in which... Uh, we'll find that out in uh, another month or so. All right. Take it easy, everybody. Have a good day. I'll see you next time. Bye.